there, GD, and anybody else that decides to watch this video. Uh, I'm just going to go over some of the problems from Khan Academy that seem difficult uh, with differential equations. Uh, so the first one we're looking at is this one here, which this one says the derivative of f is equal to negative times uh, f of x, which, so you're thinking, okay, if I take the derivative of f of x, um, it's the same as the original function, except as a negative in front of it, right? So what we want to think, what function does that? What function, when you take the derivative, you get the same thing? Well, that's e to the x, right? Um, so this should be some sort of e to the x function, right? Um, another way to think about this is the, uh, whenever, we could also write it like this. Uh, dy dx equals negative y. Um, and then we could solve this by separating the variables. So because the y here is in the numerator, we're going to put all our y's on that side. So we're going to divide both sides by y. And we're going to get dy uh, dx. Over here, we're going to have negative 1. And then we're going to have 1 over y. Because or I guess you could think about it as multiplying both sides by 1 over y. Right, um, and then we're going to go to multiply both sides by dx. Right, this is called separation of variables, and so we get d one over y uh, dy equals negative one dx. And what we're looking for is we're looking for um, the integral, right? We want to find out. We don't want dy. We want to find out what y is. So we're going to integrate both sides of this. If we integrate 1 over y with respect to y, well, that's just natural log y. If I integrate negative 1 with respect to x, I just get negative x, and then we have some constant c. All right? We're going to use properties of logarithms because we want to get y by itself. So we're going to basically e both sides, right? Because when we do that, this cancels. Again, natural log and e are um, inverses of each other and we're left with the absolute value of y equals e to the negative x plus c uh, before I write this next step down there there's a little property we can use uh, whenever I add exponents uh, if I have e to the negative x plus c that's the same as e to the c times e to the negative x right that's a property of exponents like if I had x squared times x to the third that would be x to the fifth right two plus three but if I had x to the fifth I could also write it as um, you know, x to the 2 plus 3, and then go back to this. And that's what we're doing, right? We're going back to the multiplication problem. Uh, and then we're down here, we're going to write, uh, we're going to actually, like, instead of writing e to the c, c is some arbitrary constant. So e to the c is also some arbitrary constant. Let's call it uh, m, right? So now we have m e to the negative x, right? And... Uh, it says, it says that f of 1 equals 2, uh, which in this case means if I, I have the point 1, 2, right? So if I plug in 1, I should get out 2. So here's 2, right? That's the y coordinate. We don't know what m is. e to the negative 1, right? Therefore, we can now solve for m. m is 2 over e to the negative 1 which is easier written as 2e, right? If you bring up because of that negative exponent. Uh, so then now my actual function here is y equals 2e times e to the negative x. Uh, negative x. And I could rewrite this a little bit, right? Because this is e to the 1, that's e to the negative x. I could write this as 2 e to the negative x plus 1, using that same property of exponents up here. Then it wants to know what are the values, uh, then f of 3 equals what, right? So now it's saying, well, if I plug in 3, what do I get? I get 2 e uh, negative 3 plus 2. That is y equals 2 e to the negative 1, right? And so like this is your m value, and that's your n value. All right, so that's that one. Let me do some other ones. All right, next one we're going to look at is this one here, which uh, is giving us this differential equation, right? It's a differential equation because it contains a derivative. 
Uh, it also gives us the initial condition, which means we're going to find the particular solution. If we don't have this, we find the general solution. Um, so basically what we need to do is we're going to apply separation of variables, which means because this dy is on this side, all my y's should be on this side and all my x's should be on this side. And it turns out it's already set up that way, right? The only thing that's not on the right-hand side is the dx. So if you want to, it helps you can just think about it as multiplying both sides by dx. And so we end up with and it's a differential equation. We're trying to get to uh, the normal equation, which means I need to do the anti-differentiation, which is the integral. So I need to integrate both sides. Uh, the right-hand side is quite easy, right? Integrate the right-hand side and you get x squared plus c. You gotta integrate the left-hand side and it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you might need to use a u substitution if that helps you see it. Um, so I'm gonna say u equals y to the third plus y. Therefore du equals, now this is an interesting pen, 3y squared plus one dy, right? And we solve for dy, we get dy equals du over 3y squared plus 1. And so now this integral looks like this. It's integral 3y squared plus 1 over, we, were, uh, we said that this was u, so I'm writing u there. And we know that dy is this. dy, which is here, is du over 3y squared plus 1. And these are going to cancel right, because they're the same, and we're then left with integral of 1 over u du is equal to x squared plus c. We already integrated the right-hand side. Let's integrate the left-hand side. That's natural log u, uh, and that's equal to x squared plus c. Uh, then we said, okay, u was uh, y to the third plus y. So we're now there. Um, let's typically, it's easier if we don't have natural logs, so let's, let's go and raise each side uh, to the e power, so that's going to cancel, and we're left with y to the third plus y equals, we're going to use that same trick we used in the first problem, it's going to be a e to the x squared, uh, and I guess I'll take you through these steps again, this would be using the property x minus, we get e to the c times e to the x squared, and then we're just letting e to the c equal a, right? Where since c is some arbitrary constant, a is also just some arbitrary constant. And so we have this equation, and they tell us um, y of 0 equals 1, which means if I plug in 0, I should get 1. Uh, so this would be 1, and then that should be 0. So basically we're saying e is equal to the absolute value of 2. a is equal to the absolute value of 2, so a is 2. And so our particular solution is um, 2ex squared. And then it says, what is x when y is 4? So if y is 4, then I have 4 to the third plus 4 equals 2e to the x squared. We're trying to solve for x. Uh, what is x and y is 4? We're trying to solve for x. Um, so let's do this math. 4 to the third is 16. 64 plus 4 is 68. Um, let's divide both sides by 2. And we actually don't need these absolute values anymore because, you know, that's not going to be negative. Divide by 2 on both sides. We get 34 equals e to the x squared. Uh, in order to get e to the x out of there, we need to natural log both sides, right? The natural log and the e cancel, and you're left with e to the x squared over here, natural log of 34 over here. Then we take the square root of both sides, and when you take the square root, you need a plus or minus. You get x equals plus or minus the square root of natural log 34, right? And so that's what would go here, square root natural log 34. Okay, let me pause and do another one. Okay, next one looks like this. Uh, it's similar to that first one up there. Uh, maybe I'll just take you through like a more general way to solve it, right? So again, this is saying the derivative is equal to two times the original. And sometimes it's easier to think about it in terms of dy dx. So it's basically saying dy dx is equal to, and sometimes, let me just do this generally, equals two times, equals k times y. This is called proportional. It's saying the derivative is proportional to 
the original function, right? So the rate of change is proportional, just some constant times the original function. And this is, this is how exponentials work, because if you take the derivative, you get the same thing, maybe times a constant of some sort. Um, so we're going to just solve this general case, and then we'll look at this case in particular, right? Because in this case, your k is 2, right, in that case. Um, so we start with this. We do separation of variables, which means we're going to multiply both sides by 1 over y. And we're also going to multiply both sides by dx at the same time. The reason we do that is these dx's cancel, and we're left with 1 over y dy. Uh, these y's cancel, and you're left with k and then dx from when we multiply it, right? Then we're going to integrate both sides, right? We have a differential equation. We need to integrate to get to the original function. The integral of 1 over y is natural log absolute value of y. The integral of k with respect to x is kx, and then we need our constant of integration, right? Uh, we can raise each side to the e power to get rid of this natural log, and we get absolute value of y equals, uh, we're going to do that same trick we've been doing, uh, so it's going to be a e to the kx, right? Remember this is e to the c times e to the kx, and then we just let e to the c equal a, right? So this is just going to be a, and we're going to end up with that. Uh, they tell us that f of 1 equals 5. So when I plug in 1, I get 5, right? So 5. Uh, and so here's, here's, we don't need the absolute values anymore because this can never be negative unless a is negative, right? So, so we have 5 equals a e to the k times, okay, no, let me, let me stop there for a second. So this is always the case. This is what you always get if you solve an equation like this where, or like what we started with. Right, if you have this proportional, the derivative is equal to the proportional of the original function, you always get this. So you can almost like stop, you can almost skip, you don't even need the absolute values, you can almost skip the steps of um, doing all that extra work. And if you see that, you can go directly there, right? And then in this case, our k value is 2 because that's the constant proportionality. So I can actually like, you know, just plug in 2 here because we see that that was 2 if I would have put a 2 there the whole time. And now I can just plug in this initial condition, which is 5 equals a e to the 2. Uh, so a equals 5 over e squared. And then we can write our specific solution. Which looks like that. Uh, this could also be written like this, which then I could combine these two and get I wanted to write it like that. Uh, and then it says, find f of 3. So if I plug in 3, what do I get? So this is y equals 5e2 times 3, right? That's us plugging in 3. 6 minus 2 is 4. So y equals 5e to the 4. Therefore, this is m, and this is n, right? And so that's your m and your n. Okay, and last one uh, is this dy dx equals square root of y, square root of x times y. Uh, I think it should have given you like a list of differential equations that you could, uh, you know, like a multiple choice kind of thing. But we'll go ahead and just solve it, and then you would want to compare it to that, right? So what we're going to do first is we're trying to do separation of variables, which means we need to get our y's and our x's by itself. Uh, we can do that here by, you know, changing square root of x times y into square root of x and square root of y. Then we can multiply both sides by... 1 over square root of y. And I'm, at the same time, I go multiply both sides by dx. Right? So this is going to cancel here, and the dx is going to cancel there. So I'm left, left with 1 over square root of y dy equals square root of x dx. And to solve a differential equation, we need to integrate. Right? We're trying to figure out what is the original thing, not the derivative. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. It's going to be y to the negative 1 half. And this one's a little bit easier to write it as x to the 1 half. Right, then we integrate, just power rule, integrating y to the negative 1 half. You're going to add 1, you get 1 half. Divide by 1 half, same as multiplying by 2. Integrate this, add 1, you get 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves, the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And a constant of integration, right? Um, and then, so this is where it depends on how far you want to go, right? This is an acceptable answer. Uh, except we should be passing through 0, 9. So let's go and plug in that point. So if I 
If I plug in 0 for x, I should get, all right, this is x and this is y. So I can plug in 2 times 9 to the 1 half equals 2 thirds times 0 to the 3 halves plus c. 9 to the 1 half is the same as square root of 9, which is 3. 0 times anything is 0, so we get c equals 6. All right, so our, this is our a general solution. And then our particular solution is... Right, and then you know sometimes it's nice if we can solve for y because then you know it's a instead of a implicit function, it's just a explicit y equals something. So let's do that. Let's divide everything by two. So we get y to the one half equals uh, this is going to be one third x to the three halves plus three. And then if we want to get rid of this, we need to square both sides. Right, got to square the whole side, not just each piece. And we get y equals, if I square this, uh, you know, you have to foil it out, you get 1 ninth x to the third uh, plus x to the three halves, and 2x to the three halves plus 9. Um, and I, so hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you see that as one of the answer choices. I'm not sure if it actually will be or not, but that should be an answer choice. All right, so I hope this helps. Uh, please reach out if you have more questions.